Hello everyone, and today I'm here to talk about the show Traders. Because I've just been watching the Traders New Zealand season two. Love this show. Love the trade. I know there's like a. I've seen all the, the British show. I've seen all the American show. I've seen the Australia one. I've seen the Canada one. I know they just made like a German and a Sweden and a Finnish, I think, version. I don't know where I'm going to watch those. But New Zealand was actually kind of hard to get a hold of. But uh, I think I've discovered a phenomenon from watching this show. I think I may have mentioned it before. I love this show. It's based on the game uh, Werewolf, which became Mafia. And then on the web, you can play a game called Town of Salem, which is very similar. Basically, you have a group of people that are supposed to be the faithful, the villagers, the town, the regular people. And then you've got the Mafia, the werewolves, the vampires, whatever the bad guys, the traitors, that you got to try to figure out who's the bad guys. And the bad guys, <clears throat> every night they can kill someone, or they can try to recruit another person from the town to become a traitor. Or different variations. Um, in Town of Salem, there's actually like different roles, like there's sheriffs and whatever. Anyway, it doesn't really have anything to do with the phenomenon I've discovered. It's kind of like, it's based on human principles of how the way people think and what is that marketing term bandwagoning uh so every night the group gets together and they vote and they discuss like why they're going to vote a certain person as a traitor what's suspicious about them and then everybody votes so like what's weird is what happens is that say you've got two people that are very suspicious person a and person b let's call them Andy and Bob. Andy's A, Bob's B. Both of them, they have different reasons why people suspect them. But let's say person A gets voted off. And when they vote, they go up and they say, I'm a faithful or I'm a traitor. Now, if they get it wrong and they go up there and they say, I'm a faithful, everybody gets kind of upset because they, they killed off one of their own. You know, they sent a ally home when they could have stayed and like gotten a traitor but what happens is like a is suspicious and b is suspicious they're both suspicious so if you get rid of one and he turns out to not be the traitor you should automatically think oh b must be the traitor we knew it was a or b b a was not the traitor therefore b must be the traitor so next time we're going to vote person b that's not what happens. What happens is people assume it's like they put that person to the test. Not a test of whether they're guilty or innocent. A test of whether the other humans agree that he's the most likely suspect. And when they found out all oh, the other humans didn't agree with me that he's the most likely suspect, therefore I can't get on this bandwagon. I can't jump in with everybody else because he's not their number one choice. And now maybe he wasn't even their number two choice. So maybe we can't vote for him tomorrow. So they have to like start all over again. It's like they put him to the test and they found him to be innocent when he's not. Like if you get tested and somebody else gets chosen as a potential guilty person and then they're, um, uh, what do you call it? Not rectified. What's that word? They found not to be the the guilty person. Suddenly, the person the other person that should be thought, well, he must be the guilty person. It's like he's been tested, and now they found him innocent. But you didn't do anything to test him. You didn't put him on the pedestal and make him say whether he's faithful or a traitor. So why do we do this as human beings? I think it has something to do with the NPC phenomenon I've talked about before. It's also the reason why a lot of people back in... 20, 30 years ago, there used to be this thing where people would say, when you're voting for president, don't vote for the person that you think is going to win. Vote for the person you want to win. Because a lot of people are dumb. I think it's like 80%, this NPC phenomenon. People are just fucking dumb. And they just want to vote for the person that ends up winning so they can like use it and brag and like say, well, I voted for the right Guy, he ended up being the president, so I, I voted correctly. It's not that they voted for the person they wanted. They don't give a fuck about that. It's like the people that are in MAGA. It's like, are they really thinking things through? Are they really smart people? 
like same thing with Antifa on the other side, or like people that are like crazy, like uh, you know, Democrat. You ask them questions about things they believe, like these interviews. You'll ask people, and they always like don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They don't even know like why they're protesting things when they go to protests. They don't know like somebody's policies that they espouse that they when they want to vote for him over there, they got so much. And they're like, what about this policy? Like, no, oh, I didn't know that. And that's how they, they switch out, like, which candidate says what. And they don't know what their own candidate even said. They're stupid. There was actually a Joe Rogan interview a while back with a guy who was introducing Joe Rogan to the NPC phenomenon. And Joe Rogan didn't know what it was. And this guy, he goes on to explain to him, like, NPCs come from video games. It's like the non-player character that doesn't really have... Anything. It's not a playable person. It's just like something has a pre written script that they only say this one thing and they never, they stay in this one place and they never have any like opinions or effects or anything. It's kind of like people nowadays or like NPCs. But he didn't go into the part of it that I find the most intriguing, which is the people that have like no inner monologue. Like they got nobody upstairs in here. Because most of us, a lot of people can't even like visualize things with their imagination. You tell them to think of a red apple. They're like, what do you mean, think of it? Like, picture it in my... What are you talking about? They don't know how to even do that. I don't even know, like, how they read because they're not, like, reading a story to themselves. They're just, like... If you hear, like, interviewed people, like, they don't have this inner monologue. It's hard to understand how their brain even works. It's almost like they're not human. So we should round them up and gas them. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the human brain is very tricky. And we really... Probably shouldn't be letting them vote, though. Or, like, there should be different criteria for the people that are allowed to vote, that are allowed to, like, make decisions that affect everybody in society. We live in a society, folks. We can't let brain-dead people that don't think about things and don't know what they're talking about have just as much right to vote as everybody else that are thinking creatures that, you know... Like, I don't even know what they do when they sit around and, like, think about stuff. What do they do? What do you, what do, you do? <laughs> is people live, like, totally different lives, and it really fascinates me to, like, when I find out somebody does something, like, a different way, and they didn't figure something out the same way everybody else figured it out. Like, I was just talking to my friend from Kurdistan the other day, and we were talking about something that led to me telling him about the transatlantic cable. He was like... You mean there's a cable under the ocean that they laid down? It connects America to Europe? And I'm like, yeah, they put it down in the, like, 1856 or something like that. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, he had no clue. Same thing, I saw this video a long time ago. No, well, it wasn't that long ago. A black guy on a radio show, and they were talking about how they wiped their ass. And he was, like, saying but something about, like... You have to wash your hands to get all the poo-poo off. And they're like, how do you get so much poo-poo on your hands? And he was talking about, well, you know, when you when you poop and you catch it in your hand and you drop it into the water. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? He was like, he didn't want to get, like, splash cold water on his asshole or something when he was a kid. And nobody ever told him any different. So he assumed that's how you wipe your ass. You put some toilet paper on your hand. I guess maybe he didn't even do that. And he like, catches the poop. Whenever he poops, he catches it. I don't know what he does when he has diarrhea. <laughs> he drops it in the water and like some people take showers different some people use a washcloth I do I know most black people do because I'm like mostly black but like a lot of like white people don't do that they just rub the soap on themselves so like the next person if the last thing you wash is your ass or your balls and the first thing they wash is their face you're scrubbing balls and ass on your face I maybe just freaked a lot of people out right there because you've been doing this your whole life. Like, if you share a shower or something, not if you live by yourself like me, but, like, it's just a washcloth. is It scrubs better, too. It, some people use a loofah, which is kind of in between, kind of gross. Anyway, uh, when I find out stuff like that, like somebody didn't know something or somebody does something a different way, that's one of my favorite things in the world, finding out the differences between humans and stuff. But, like, NPCs, like, what do they do? A lot of, like, these people that just they become hoarders, or... I saw a video yesterday of this woman in, like, Las Vegas. She was just, like, totally out of her fucking mind at the counter at a convenience store. She got a cup of ice, and she just kept saying the N-word over and over again. Talking, it looked almost like she was talking on a movie she was watching in her brain. She ended up just, like, walking out and stealing the ice, and, like, everybody was freaking out. She was so weird. 
She probably is going to vote in this election, though. That's what I'm saying. There's these NPCs. Not just like non-player characters, but people that are totally fucking crazy. People that they just bandwagon all their opinions. They just say whatever everybody else says, and they just repeat things. And they don't have their own opinions. And it's wild. It's scary, and it's wild.